Hey everyone, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a quick intro tutorial on one of my own ensembles in the Reactor user library called Automato and I'll provide a link to that in the video description. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with a new Reactor video once a week. Alright, so let's get started. Automoto is a reactor instrument that I designed with the help of a lot of community interaction and is based on another web project that kind of got pretty famous a couple years ago uh, called Automata, spelled slightly differently but sounding very similar. And so this is basically just a reactor implementation of that uh, flash program. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a new ensemble here, which by default comes with this empty instrument loaded, which we're not going to need, so we can just delete. And I saved Automata as a uh, instrument, so you can move it into your instrument folder and select it from the instrument menu, and you'll get the Automato instrument has two outputs, one for pitch and one for gate. And it's not, it doesn't output any sound at all, it's simply a MIDI device, so we're going to need a synthesizer to use with it. So let's go back into the instruments menu and choose the uh, synthesizer submenu, and we can choose a synthesizer from this list. Some of them work better than others. Steampipe 2 is a particularly good match with Automato. Uh, for today's purposes, I'm going to load up a copy of Carbon 2, but you can choose uh, any of these that you want. I th think they should all work. And just uh, make sure once you have it all hooked up that it works with the controller. Okay, so we have the Automato instrument with the pitch and gate outputs, but the Carbon instrument does not have inputs for pitch and gate. So Let's talk about how to get Automato to control Carbon 2. I'm going to select the Connect tab in the Carbon 2 Instrument Properties and find the MIDI In section and the From Internal Instruments menu where you can select Automato to control Carbon 2. And now any MIDI that comes out of the Automato instrument should control Carbon 2 regardless of whether they're actually connected via wires or not. Alright, so these take up a bit of space together, so we can turn off the sidebar option here and select a preset from both Carbon 2 and from Automato. And when we press play, uh, the sequencer for Automato will start and will trigger the Carbon 2 synthesizer. Alright, so this is the kind of sound that Automato excels at using vibes and bells and other mallet instruments to create these ever-changing harmonies, melodies. Alright, so let's just talk a little bit about how to program Automato to get these sequences. Down at the bottom here, there are four different types of units that we can add to the grid here. And we can left click to add the selected type of component to the grid. And as long as the clock isn't running, it'll stay put where we added it. <clears throat> but when we start the clock, it starts moving. And every time it hits the end, it turns around and triggers the MIDI note that is listed at the end of the column here. Or I guess that's a row, technically. We can drag up and down and use this 
MIDI note like a knob here to control which knob, uh, which note is played. Alright, so you might notice that the square that we originally added this arrow to has this little dot in the bottom here. So we can right click on that square to delete that unit. And that's a little clunky interface wise, but it was just kind of a necessity given the complexity of programming data structures like this in Reactor. Not sure if I could make it better if I tried to program it now or not. This is a few years old. Alright, so next let's talk about some of these knobs that we have to the left hand side of our grid here. So let's add another note. And we can use the time knob to control the speed that it moves across the grid. And we can use the length knob to control the length of any notes that we trigger. So let's change to something that we can actually hear the long notes on. And turn up the length. Slow down the time a little here. Alright, so let's go back to our vibe sound here and talk about how we can quickly program in scales to our auto auto-moto structure here. So go over to the B view in auto auto-moto and I've created this handy little scale maker. You can choose the root note of your scale here and you can choose from a list of different scale types in this menu here and our handy little display at the bottom will show which notes this uses or not. So you have your Ionian scale which is basically your major scale, your Aeolian, and on down the line. Alright, so let's talk about... Oh, and we also have this transpose knob here that we can use to pitch up or down the scale that we've selected. Alright, so let's talk about how to program some simple melodies into our auto mono grid. The way that the sequence that auto mono plays evolves is caused by collisions of the units in the grid. So one of the best ways to get some variations out of sounds that you're getting is to set up two nodes to collide with each other like so. So here I have it set up. Well, it's the moment we hit play, uh, one of these is going to go to the right and the other one's going to go up and they're both going to occupy the same square and when they do they're going to change direction and that will give us a morphing sequence. Another easy way to force a collision is to place two nodes going in the same direction directly next to each other. And when one of them turns around, it spends one unit of time doing that, and it collides with the other one. complex you set it up to force collisions of different nodes, the more variations you'll get on your sounds. You can create uh, sequences that are basically endless. I mean, they'll technically repeat after a few billion years, but...
All right, so that's the basis of using Automoto as a MIDI sequencer. Hope you all like this tutorial. Uh, please check us out on reactortutorials.com. We have a ton of text-based tutorials there as well. I get a little more advanced with some topics. All right, have a good week.